Hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. Today we're going to talk about a great evil, a necessary evil, one that I use every day, but an evil nonetheless. We're talking about peck drilling. So a man was given the job of painting the white lines down the center of a highway. Now on his first day, he painted six miles. The next day, three miles. The following day, less than a mile. So his boss calls him into his office and says, what's going on? You started out so great. The man looks at his feet and just says, boss, I'm trying my best. But that, that paint can just keeps getting further and further away each day. Get it? You can press pause, we'll wait for you. Well, we can explain this joke for you. Although, author E.B. White once said that explaining a joke is kind of like dissecting a frog. You understand it better, but the frog dies in the process. Eh, let's go ahead and dissect this frog, or explain this joke. So why did it take the man longer and longer each day to paint the lines on that road? He painted six miles, then three miles, then one mile. He painted 10 miles overall worth of white lines on the highway, but he walked way further than 10 miles. He had to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, dipping his brush in that paint can to keep it wet. He made a lot of trips. Again, our man did not walk 10 miles. He walked much further. Tyler, let's find out how far. Grab that string and start walking. If our man had to dip his brush back in that can every 10 feet to keep the brush wet, then over the course of those three days, he would have walked more than 50,000 miles. That's twice around the planet. Tyler, I think we're gonna need some more string. I know, this is a terrible joke, not realistic at all. But we explained it, we dissected it, and we thoroughly killed it in the process. Now we can move on to our, our real topic, which is peck drilling. We're going to show you how those multiple passes can add up on peck drilling as well. In my machine, I've drilled a hole two and a half inches deep. I used a G83 peck drilling cycle with a Q value of one half D. That's one half the diameter of the tool. This is a common value that a lot of shops use without thinking about the implications. On this part, that works out to 21 passes. Our tool has to go up and down, back up to that R plane, and back down to the bottom of the hole 21 times. So, just like our painter, we're gonna go much further than our two and a half inches. We're gonna be moving our tool close to 60 inches to make this single hole because we're using such a small Q peck value. So this is really not funny. There is no joke here. We're wasting a lot of cycle time with these small QPEC values, but we can fix this. We've got to fix this. When we drill, much of our tool wear is happening as the tip of the drill enters the material. So with 21 pecs, our tool is entering the workpiece 21 times. We are virtually guaranteeing that our drill is going to wear out quickly with, with this many passes. When drilling, one half D is way too small for our pecs on most materials. But how far can we go? How much can we take with those passes? Bigger, bigger, okay. Typically, depending on the material, we can go three to five times the diameter of the tool for that first peck. And then with each successive peck, we can take less and less material. So how do we program progressively smaller pecs? We're going to use that same G83 code, except this time we're going to use IJK PECs instead of Q PECs. Our I value is that initial PEC. How far do I want it to drill in that first pass? Our J value is how much I want to reduce that PEC by each and every time. And our K value is my minimum PEC amount. What's the smallest amount I want to drill by? Now, on my part, I'm using a quarter inch diameter drill. My D value is 0.25. On my first peck, I'm gonna take four XD. Now, we've got a little bit of rapid plane in there. We've got a drill point, 
And if you don't count that stuff, it's really more like 3XD. But I used an I 1.0. That's four times the diameter of my tool. I reduced my pecs by 2XD with each successive pass. So I used a J.5. 2XD in our case, quarter inch drill times 2.5. And I want my minimum pec to be 1XD. That's a quarter inch drill. That's going to be K.25. Now these are okay starting values for most materials and drilling cycles. Check with your tool supplier for the values that work best for your tools. Now, by making these changes, we reduce the number of pecs we're taking from 21 down to seven. 21 down to seven passes. This brought our cycle time down from 18 seconds per hole to nine seconds per hole. I'll say this again. By switching from a G83Q pec to a G83IJK pec, we cut our cycle time for all of our drills in half. Now this G83IJK cycle is also available on your Haas lathe. So if you're a lathe guy, check it out, save some time. We could also have used our G73 high speed pecking cycle. This high speed cycle is gonna drill and it's still gonna peck, but instead of retracting all the way back to the R plane, it's just gonna back off by the amount that's set in setting 22 usually 10 thousandths of an inch. So it backs off a little bit and then it gets right back into the cut. Now you can use uh, an IJK peck with a G73 cycle as well. People will peck drill for all kinds of reasons. They'll use a G83 IJK if they need a, to clear some packed chips from their drill or if they need to get coolant on the tip of that drill. People will use a G73 cycle if they need to break up some long stringy chips or maybe turn them into the little tiny chips. Of course, in a perfect world, we would just use a TSC through spindle coolant drill to drill straight to the bottom of that hole in one shot. It doesn't get any better than that. No pecking at all. That's the fastest way to get there. Now, we showed you a G83 Q cycle. That took about 18 seconds. We showed you a G83 IJK cycle. That took about nine seconds. We showed you the G73, seven seconds. And a TSC drill running a G81 cycle that can punch this hole in just three seconds. So we've given you lots of tips, lots of options, lots of ways that you can drill faster. Now I'm standing in front of a VF3 SS machine. These SS models have faster accelerations, faster rapids, which means faster drill pecking cycles. If you're running any volume of parts, you might want to look at an SS machine, pencil it out, see if it makes sense for you. Um, or even one of our DMDT drill tap machines. Those machines are just built for speed. They're built for fast pecs. Well, I want to remind you to get rid of pecs if at all possible. If you've got a chance, get rid of pecs entirely. If not, use a G83 IJK pec instead of a G83 Q pec. And give that G73 a try if you just want to break up the chips. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned is the tool. We need you to call your tooling supplier. Um, a lot has happened in the last few years in regards to drill and tooling technology. They've got drills that can drill the hole behind me with just regular flood coolant in one shot, no pecs at all, right? Just a better flute design, high polished flutes. There are incredible drills out there. We need you to call your tooling supplier because we want you to make money. We need you to make money. Um, I, I sound like, a, uh, like one of those TV salesmen and I don't even care, right? Call in the next 10 minutes and receive a free set of steak knives. Well, we want you to make money. So thanks for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day. Thank you.